Hey everyone, this is George Kuros. Welcome back to the final episode, number four, of the highlights from 2022 from the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And today's theme is the idea of being observant. Just kind of being present in the moment and just noticing the things that are around us, things that are happening, and how we utilize that space to make us actually better. And I remember this past year, I was really struggling. I was really having a hard time. And I I think a lot of times when people, you know, I talk about Mindset Monday and, you know, uh, if I say the word Mindset Monday, you know, I say Mindset Monday. (laughs) So I was thinking about Mindset Monday and I was talking about this, how, you know, a lot of times you hear people that, you know, are really motivated and trying stuff. It doesn't mean that they don't struggle with things. It it just means they're, they're, they're developing habits to kind of get them through some of those levels, you know, through some of those times. It's not that people that are motivated to have bad days. It's that they, they focus on the things that work to continuously get them through. And one of the things that I started doing when I was kind of having this lull was I would wake up every morning and first of all, I would visualize what do I hope from my day? Like what do, how do I see my day playing out? And really kind of focusing on that and seeing it before it actually happened um, really kind of helped me. And that would be like little things like how am I going to feel on exercise, you know? How will I feel and what will, how will I fuel my body? How will I fuel my mind? Being thoughtful of the things that I actually take in because we, we get consumed by media. And one of the things that I really try to focus on is that when people go to this space and they listen to this, I hope that they feel inspired, that they're encouraged to try new things, to push themselves. What I don't want is people feeling worse when they walk out of here. And a lot of times the the media that we consume can actually make us feel worse, give us anxiety. So I'm very thoughtful of this. And it actually led to the second thing that I really started doing is really focusing on being grateful. How are we grateful for the things that we have in our lives right now? It's really easy to get caught up on what we don't have that we often lose sight of the things that really matter in front of us. And I think sometimes when we just take that moment to be observant and just kind of notice the world around us, notice this, we start seeing that, you know, things are good in many ways. And it doesn't mean things are perfect. doesn't mean things can't get better. But I think it is so much easier to push forward, to help others when we just kind of look internally and think about, you know, the things that we have and kind of fuels us to serve others. And that to me is one of the keys of being observant in these spaces is focusing on being grateful. And this, that's really one of the reasons I wanted to kind of end with this podcast of the four episodes is because I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you're taking the time to listen to this. I'm grateful for the time I have away from the internet, the time that I've created to read books, to be with my family, to really enjoy my kids in a way. And I don't think I'd have been as good at this if I didn't just kind of, you know, start to just kind of observe and just be in that moment. That focus on being present has been a real big theme for me this year. So I'm glad you're here. I hope from my wonderful guests, you'll pick up some ideas and just kind of be in this moment and just kind of think about, you know, maybe some of the things that you're grateful for and what are they? And if I would love to hear about them. You can share them in the comments below. Um, I love learning from you. And uh, I hope that you can learn something from me this year. Or you have learned something from me this year. But I know you're going to for sure learn from my guests that I have on this podcast. So welcome back to the final episode of the highlights from 2022 from the Interviewers Mindset Podcast. And I think there is this, and I think this is kind of what I, why I want to talk about this on the podcast, on this idea of Mindset Monday. A lot of times people see um, uh, the things that we, we get to do that we love and they want to be there or they want to try that or they want to do that. I've had so many people reach out to me and say like, I'd like to be a speaker and, you know, and I think a lot of times the advice I give them is like, hey, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And I've really been thinking about that. I try to give them a pathway of things to do. But what I don't do sometimes is kind of remind them of some things that they might be giving up. And I have, there's this quote, it is like, there's no one really it's attributed to, but it's been shared and it's been, there's variances of it over years. And it says it takes years and years of hard work to become an overnight success. 
And I totally agree that like a lot of times people, we see where someone's at and we don't see the journey that got them to that point. And we can have envy and things like that, but do we, are we envious of the work they put into it? Right? Like, are we jealous about where they got to? Or are we also, cause then we should also be jealous that they have the willingness to put in extra work to do things. But also I think um, if you take that same quote, it takes years and years of hard work to become a night success. There's also another quote, very similar that, you know, I, to, you know, that can actually be this, almost the same and, you know, lead to the same outcome is that it takes years and years of sacrifice to become an overnight success. It's sometimes not only the things that we're willing to do, it's the things that we are willing to kind of give up in some ways too. And we, you got to kind of look at that and, and ask yourself, are you willing to sacrifice some things in your life? And so let, let's just take this on a, a personal level. Uh, I had been working out for a long, long time and I was not seeing the results that I wanted um, to see. I was really frustrated because I'm like, look, I, like, and I'm not talking about like 30 minutes and like walk. I'm like talking like hours a day. I was working out, tr pushing myself to a point where I could not actually find any six, like it was really, really overwhelming, but I still wasn't finding any growth. I wasn't finding any success in my goals of what I was doing. It was not until I actually corrected my eating habits that I, you know, really kind of started to seeing results. And since then I started really realizing, you know, a lot of people say, you know, like abs are made in the kitchen, you know, it's 90% diet, stuff like that. And I used to like, oh, you know, that's ridiculous, but it is, it is actually kind of true. So that's was kind of the frustrating part. So I had to like, start asking myself like, Hey, like, what am I willing not to, to have in my diet anymore? And it's not that you have to sacrifice things all the time, but I think, you know, I, I always kind of had this idea of like, Oh, like, eating, you know, is part of life. And it's just, you know, part of my Greek culture of growing up, you know, in a restaurant and stuff like that. I don't want to give up like certain foods and things like that. But I think I went overboard, right? And I don't think you have to give up certain foods. But I think you for me, anyways, I had to give up where I was eating unhealthy as a, a, a normal thing, like that was just my norm and eating. So I would like, eat unhealthy, like, eight meals out of 10, and then try to correct it by eating two salads, right? And so I had to start asking myself, like, what am I willing to give up on a consistent basis? And again, like all of these things, I think there's nothing you have to give up, you know, majority wise, like I still eat pizza every now and then I still have chips, right? And I find that when I start kind of slipping, it has nothing to do with my exercise, it's, it's my eating. And then I start feeling like in a totally different way, I start feeling really like sluggish and things like that. And a lot of people will say, um, you know, but I don't want to give those things up. And that's great. If, that, if you don't want to give those things up, then that's on you, right? And that's on you. But if you're not willing to give those things up, we also can't really be frustrated when we don't see results. Imagine this. If every single teacher called every single parent at the beginning no. of the school year and told them good news, told them how excited they were to welcome the students to the class or your student. Um, I know during COVID, just having my uh, child's teacher call and say, hey, right. I'm just calling and check on Jocelyn. Like I was practically in tears. And, you know, that was just a heavy moment anyway, the, the right. pandemic. But if you call and give good news, you call and establish a relationship, you call and share things before uh, there's a moment of escalation or something, then the parent is more apt to believe you because they already have a connection with you. Right. And so um, I think while that is a reality, uh, a lot of times the teacher is always wrong. I think there are some things that we can do to be more proactive and connect yes. and build a relationship with our, with our parents. So I guarantee you somebody's, and this is the way I see this, what you just said, and I think it's so important. Somebody is listening to this and they're going, you know, that's a really great idea, <laughs> but like, I don't have time for this, right? Like I got all this stuff I'm getting ready, blah, blah, blah. And the way that I always see it is, you can take the two minutes now no. mm -hmm. and it's going to save you literally hours later when you have to make a tough one. Right. Or you could, you're, you know, and then it, like, it's always, I always see it as an investment, right? That's mm -hmm. an investment in their kids. It's mm -hmm. and plus like, not like I would rather have, uh, you know, a, a five minute tough phone call 
that I'm not as stressed out as because I've built a relationship with the person right. Then an hour long stressful. And then this might go to the superintendent and yeah. like all this <laughs> stuff. Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, like just, just mm -hmm. like, I think that advice is so important, but like mm -hmm. for people listening, it is, it is totally an investment that you will get back. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, may, and maybe you'll never, maybe you'll never have a tough phone call. Mm -hmm. And then all you did was make that parent feel good. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen, I'm telling you, it works because even uh, we yeah. uh, it was an initiative of our school district. And just to see, you know, social media, I'm pretty active on pretty much all of the platforms. And so to hear to see parents who are post either a good newsletter or to, right. uh, make a post and say, oh, my God, my, my, my child's teacher just called and told me that he was he was good in class today. That just made my day because normally they're calling to tell me that he's not a good kid or telling me what he did wrong and so on and so forth. So it, parents. You know, I uh, I had a, a superintendent a mentor who told me that parents are sending us the best that they have. It's not like they're keeping all the good kids at home. And, just, <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. and so um, and they, everybody wants what's best for their kid. It's just yeah. many times they just don't have the tools in order to to advocate for them. And so it's so important that as teachers and, you know, teachers always rise to the occasion. And so uh, that's why we try to make sure that we build those relationships again, not just with our students, but also with our with our families. One of the things I really admire about what, how, what you're doing on TikTok and how you're sharing stuff, I, I feel you're sharing stuff you're passionate about and you're interested in and that that actually attracts an audience of I may, I, mean, I don't want to maybe sound offensive. It's not going to attract as big an audience if you're maybe like dancing or doing ridiculous stunts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like a big, like, Hey, let's learn about literacy. TikTok. Yeah. It's like, Oh, <laughs> I, I fell on literacy TikTok today. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, that to me is, I, I feel like you still get like thousands of likes on stuff that you're sharing, which I, you know, is, to me, I, I think we kind of take this for granted. Like I grew up in a town of 5,000 people total. Right. And it's not like I could, and just think that people get like hundreds of thousands of views and likes on stuff. I'm like, that's yeah. like, you know, my, I grew up in a town of 5,000 people. And so one of the things that I think is really important to me is how do we actually help our students create stuff they're passionate about and that mm -hmm. is true to them, not create stuff that they think other people want to see and it actually takes away from who they are. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's really easy to kind of get caught up in like, Oh, here's the fad. Let's jump into it because I know this will get me likes. Mm -hmm. Right. So this won't get me a bunch as many likes, but this is something that I'm passionate about. Right. Like I talk about, I talk a lot about the same things I talked about years ago because I'm really passionate about this stuff. Right. I'm not trying to like trend chase. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I when I make my TikToks, I, you know, it would be really easy, I think, to use the music or do the same right. trend or whatever. And I've really tried to stay away from that because I feel like it takes away from what I'm trying to say. And I'm just trying to be of use to teachers. And if they're like me, they don't have time for like deciphering what the music is or watching the cute little, you know, whatever they're like, tell me, like, tell me what it is. And so um, I think that that is just being really confident in who you are. And that's where it comes back for the kids is we have to make sure that they actually believe the things that they're saying that, that, that they put out there, you know, and that's one of the things that we try to talk about with, you know, in their writing or when they post stuff or whatever. But do you actually believe that? Like, would you if someone came for you in the comments, you know, would it make you all of, like upset or, you know, would you be able to sit there and have a conversation right. with them because you're secure in your position? And so I think that's kind of what I've just tried to stick to is is what I'm doing of value, you know, like, do I, you know, like, am I open to ideas about this? What is the worst thing that a person could possibly say? And then, you know, to me, that might be helpful. It might be something that like, I didn't think about, right. Or they could be right. Like we could both be right at the same time and not agree. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure a hundred percent how we teach that specifically, well, but I, I think, do think, I think you modeling is the best start. Yeah. And just being like, this is what I'm, you know, who I am, this is what I'm confident in. And I would love to sit and talk to you about it some more. And if if you're posting that kind of stuff, I think you'll find an audience because people want to hear the truth, right? I mean, some of my best videos, I guess, were days when I just like popped it open right. and I was like, here's what I want to talk about right now because this is what's really happening. 
And people responded to that. I mean, there was one where I was completely overwhelmed with my classroom being built. I don't know if you got to see that one. And people were like offering to drive into town to help me because they were like, this is, this is real. A lot of times when we were talking, when I was talking about this idea of authority, you know, kind of making uh, an impact, I do know that that makes an impact early, right? But but later people that wears off and then they want to see what you're going to actually do. And there, there was this, uh, I used to teach this like Covey workshop thing. And I remember this one distinct example is really powerful. Um, this, this new, um, principal, she came into a, a new school. They had a lot of trouble, a lot of issues, a lot of behavioral things going on. And they, the school is like, it was like, a, it was like a nice little video. I'm sure it's true. Um, cause it was based on someone. But it was like, there was no pride in the school, right? And like everything was gross, blah, blah, blah. And so she went into this bathroom and she said, hey, like how come there's like the bathroom stinks. There's literally, and they're like, well, there's actually like urine like caked into the floor and we can't get it out, right? And we've tried blah, blah, blah. So she actually like went in the bathroom and got it out. And it was like, okay, like we got to pick it up. Like if this is the principal doing this, then it says something. And I, I always remember that story because that was such a powerful example to see how she she did this and like the tone that it set. Because I think a lot of times um, teachers look at a, a, an administrator who is really good at delegating uh, stuff, but won't do anything themselves. And then they're like, that wears off. Do you know what I mean? And oh, it's not yeah. like finding their strengths. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yes. Right? No, I totally agree. Yeah, I, like, and how do you like how do you how do you model that? Like, what? How do you do that in your role? I, I'm not willing to get my hand, or I'm not uh, unwilling to get my hands dirty in any situation. I will do whatever it takes. I thought that was going in a different way. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, well, there's, there, uh, there's a there's a there's a urine year, year line for me. <laughs> but I'm I'm never I've never been afraid to just jump right in and right. where I can. Even uh, this morning we. Um, had a standardized assessment we were giving students and we realized some of the testing tickets were wrong. Mm -hmm. I have no problem jumping right in and saying, what do I need to do? I'll print, I'll cut, I'll do anything, right. you know, for us to come together and just make this happen. And that's just who I am as a person. I've, I've always right. felt like leading by example is the best way we can lead, whether you're in a school or beyond, it doesn't matter. People are going to pick up on what you do more than what you say. So I can, and this, comes from watching my father my entire life. He wasn't a man who was going to woo you with words, but right. you just watched him on a daily basis. And he said, man, this guy's a leader. Right. And I had friends my whole life going, your dad is, there's just something about him. He's really awesome. What did All your dad do? What did my dad do? He was uh, an insurance agent. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. But he, you know, he coached um, growing up, he coached a lot and just people gravitated toward him, towards him. And I truly believe it's because he led by example. And that was mm -hmm. my first exposure to, okay, if I'm going to lead, I got to lead by example first and foremost before anything else. Yeah. And like, like when I talked to you, I talked to Dr. Beelan. So like you're, you're, by the way, your district's blessed to have both of you, which is pretty Thank you. incredible. Thank you. Like both in the same district. That's yeah. amazing. Um, and really kind of thinking about that. You, you both remind me of, some of the qualities when it's kind of interesting that you said about your dad of my my father and my mom really? and they owned a restaurant and they were just kind of like like they were just with everybody right it was like they made everyone feel welcome like i remember my dad coming out it was like he kind of like sat <laughs> up when he came out you know because it, it was just it was just interesting and i i feel there's like that that component of what my parents did in a restaurant was something that was like totally in me um, when I r ran a school and I didn't really realize it, like, it's just kind of, you just, but sometimes that like it's modeling leads to osmosis, right? Like that, it just kind of like seeps into you that you just kind of take on the characteristics of that. And I noticed, you know, the more I stood outside in the morning greeting kids, the more staff started 
greeting kids outside their hallways, right? Life is really, really right. challenging. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, a teacher who's been in the game for 15 years and you're struggling, it's really hard, or you're an 11 year old who's really trying to like struggle right. with executive functioning, but you couldn't spell executive functioning and you have no idea even what that is. Right. Or you're somebody who's dealing with, you know, hard physical challenges, you know, uh, limitations to your body, right. your family's in hard straits, whatever it is. I never want to blame anybody for being in a tough spot, but I deeply believe that one of the most important powers we have is the ability to reframe what we're going mm -hmm. through and say, you know what, there are some things I can do. And, you know, so the light I have, you know, and, and I try to share with people because like you, I think maybe this is a projection. I don't know if it is George, but like, when people call me out for being kind or positive, I'm like, listen, man, I got plenty of darkness. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not here to pretend that everything's, as you said, right. sunshine and rainbows in our right. other podcast. What I'm trying to say here is there's sunshine and rainbows. There's also rainstorms and earthquakes, but you know what? Don't forget that there is actually sunshine, man. And there are actual rainbows right. and, and, right. And you can also make that sunshine and be those rainbows. And, and I don't just mean for other people, for yourself. So, I mean, th the message I have for people is I hear where you are. I respect it. And, you know, if you're tapping out or if you need to dip, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to judge you. But I also want to say, as I said at the top of this episode, um, you are in one of the most powerful positions in the history of the world as a teacher. Right. Right. No, you might not be well known. There's nobody walking around with like, you know, your name on the back of their jersey. There's not a poster of you, although there should be probably a poster right. of you holding a piece of chalk in somebody's room. But you are literally going to be talked about forever mm -hmm. by hundreds, if not thousands of people. And dude, that's just like that's something and feel that, you know, and and think mm -hmm. about what you can do with it. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're talking about this, you know, the 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 big catchphrase of toxic positivity and all that stuff. And you probably, mm. heard, I'm sure you've heard that quite a bit. Right. Uh, totally. And I, you know, I've been like, Oh, you're just like, I, I, I don't think I'm a overly positive person to be honest with you. I'm a very solution focused person. Like mm. I'm going to say this sucks. I got, but I got to figure it out. Right. And I don't swear usually, but yeah, I actually, that was my first swear. First swear. <laughs> let's go <laughs> so anyways yeah like i i um i i i i know this is and i i think you said something that really connected with me if i don't try to figure out a solution if i don't try to find a way forward the the dark for me will get worse and yeah. i'll get and i can get in a really bad hole and like you know i've dealt with depression for years and stuff like that too and i think a lot of times i understand why people are like hey like you know, your positivity is not helping this stuff. Okay. Like then mute me, do whatever, but this is what I need to get through right now. This is what I need to kind of get through some of the stuff that I'm going through in that space. Mm. And, it, and like, uh, there's a really great quote from Mark and angel and I've shared it a million times. It's not like, and it's something paraphrased along the lines of like, it's not about ignoring the negative. It's about finding solutions. Now we talked about, about what you learned from the process. What do you hope we always want to overall change education, right? Like we wanted to make it better for every person. Not only like we always talk about the students, but we want to make it better for the adults too, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, and if you make it better for the adults, guess what? It's better for the kids typically. So what do you hope this book will do for educators and education to some extent? Well, my hope is that um, each and every one of us that are in education as an educator sees the responsibility and the autonomy or the ability to we, that we have to improve the school culture. Mm -hmm. Because I, I give practical steps and strategies on how to do that. It's not a how-to book any by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like, okay, I can control my attitude, which is my you know my disposition, my my how I present myself, and I can control my actions, the things that I do. I can I can I can do those two things, and that'll influence, hopefully, influence the kind the kind of school culture that we want to create. If everybody owns that, man, yeah what types of schools will we have? And so I talk about this, this video that I, that I write about is <clears throat> Maurice Cheeks. Um, oh, I'm going to oh, yeah. I'm gonna start crying. Yeah. yeah. When you, you know, the video, I was, do. Uh, yeah. I, I share that. And when I present, but also write about that because he exemplified the two things he can, could have controlled in that situation, mm -hmm. which was his attitude about, I'm going to help this young lady, his actions. Here's how I'm going to help her. And he did it. That young lady was surrounded by a number of adults. One adult stepped up to help her out in her time of need. Right. Just one. And it was him. 
that that if we do that as educators, which you know we do, many of us do. I'm not saying I'm not. This is not a a, a slight to saying it's not happening, but if we all had that Maurice Cheeks mindset, right? That I can control my attitude and actions every single day. My hope is that we will see that we each of us have the power to create the culture that we want, so that it's 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 a caring place that's with high expectations and that everybody can reach a level of success.